this, this equipment's used for um, setting up slides for indirect immunofluorescence tests. Um, and um, at the moment it's priming with phosphate buffered saline, which is what we use to dilute the samples in. There's a rack with standards and controls which are pre-diluted. They're predetermined samples of known concentration and um, specificity. And they're run with the patient samples on each assay. And they're put in a control rack because they're, they're not diluted by the machine, they're put straight onto the slides. We have um, sample dilution tubes which are placed in a special sample dilution rack um, on the machine um, where the machine makes a 1 in 80 dilution of the patient samples in PBS. We run commercially made slides. These slide preparations um, have a, an antigen preparation in each well and this is made from HEP2 cells which is a cell line prepared from pharyngeal carcinoma cells and these cells are known to express the antigens that the, to which the antibodies that we want to detect are directed against. The patient samples are loaded into a, a dilution rack from which the machine will be able to pick them up, take an aliquot of the, each sample in turn and um, dilute them with the phosphate bu buffer saline or PBS in the dilution tubes. It will then pick up an aliquot from the diluted patient sample and dispense it onto the slides. This process is an automated process. The slides are then labelled with the dates and um, the slide number. And they're there put in a slide tray where the machine will transfer the diluted patient sample into the correct position on the um, slide tray. The machine is calibrated so that it knows um, which, dilu which dilution tube corresponds to which um, well on the slide. The sample conjugate is diluted um, um, iso and isofinate, which is a FITSI solution. Um, the concentrated FITSI solution is diluted to um, a pre, uh, the correct um, concentration and um, placed in the machine in a, um, a pre-calibrated position on the, um, on, the, on the reagent rack.
the um, control screen for the machine shows, indicates where the samples are being added and will flag up any um, pipetting errors so that we can then um, intervene and add samples, dilute samples and add them manually if the machine hasn't pipetted them properly. Uh, it indicates um, where the samples have been put with a green dot and if there's any errors it puts in a red dot, <laughs> colour coded. The slides are then placed under an uh, ultraviolet light microscope where, which has special optics that filter out the wavelengths, length, the wavelengths that aren't required for the, in the detection system. The ultraviolet light is focused onto each well and then if the FITSI conjugate label as bound to patient human IgG present on the in the patient samples, which have um, bound to the the slide surface, then um, the FITSI is excited under the UV light and it emit, emits um, a light of a different wavelength and um, that wavelength can be detected by the human eye um, because the microscope has a special filtering system um, which um, enhances that wavelength and filters out other wavelengths. This method is, is fairly sensitive and um, it, it can be quite specific because um, the antibodies are binding directly to the proteins. Sorry, the antibodies in the patient samples are binding directly to proteins in the cells, and you can see exactly where they're binding, and they create um, characteristic patterns which we can recognise, and certain patterns are associated with um, different types of antibodies. So, which are in, again associated with different diseases.